Soma's ties to public security may lead to his undoing. By seizing the puppet himself, Yagami seeks to pull down the puppet master holding the strings. To do so, he forms a temporary alliance with the fugitive Kuana. But Soma arrives to carve a bloody path into a hideaway no one should know about. Reiko Kusumoto's betrayal has proven more volatile than anyone could have guessed. Genda sensei they're calling last night's bombing a terrorist attack. The body they recovered was burnt beyond recognition. That was a Kaikei-kun, right? The one Yagami mentioned? Yes, I believe so. Nothing about Soma or RK in the article either. Could public security be tampering with the press? I wouldn't give public security that much credit. Besides, if a bomb goes off in a deserted public place, it's only natural for the police to assume it's terrorism. Right. I guess when you put it that way. Unfortunately, even if they do identify a Kaikei-kun, the ones responsible are Kuana and Soma. Two guys who are totally off the grid. Any investigation would grind to a halt. Probably end up as another unsolved mystery. If the public learned the bombing was tied to Ihara's battery case, Jaws would hit the floor. Yeah. Anyway, where's Yagami? You heard from him since last night? No. We've been in touch via email, though. He's on his way to a hospital now. Great. What'd he get himself into now? If he's actually going to the hospital, does that mean it's serious? Don't worry, he's fine. He's just going to meet with someone about the case. Who'd want to meet up at a hospital? Reiko Kusumoto. Thirteen years. I still can't believe it. Waking up and finding out you're suddenly thirty. Take your time. You'll adjust eventually. Work again? I won't be long. I just need to take a quick meeting. Now put down that mirror already. So, you sold Kwan out to public security because Mitsurakun woke up. Does that about sum it up? <sighs> you waited 13 years for Mitsurakun to wake up. If you turn yourself in now, you'd lose him all over again. There's that. Yes. Going forward, he needs to stand on his own two feet and rebuild his life. It'll take time. And lots of it. There's no real end in sight. He's at a disadvantage as it is. And to brand him the child of a murderer on top of that. I couldn't. Mitsuru! 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 
するはい。You're going to have to be his shield, Kusumoto-san. We'll do it together. With your cooperation. <laughs> I have to do what I can to protect him. I suppose so, but... You covered up your crimes and it was Sawa-sensei who got caught in the crossfire. On top of that, Akaike-kun's throat was slit last night. Now he's dead too. Kawano will be another body for the pile soon. Hell, maybe I'm in trouble myself. How was he yesterday? Well, as soon as RK showed up for him, he knew you'd stabbed him in the back. I can't really say how that made him feel. Until now, he'd been adamant about ensuring you stayed out of this. He said no one could blame you for what you did to Shinya Kawai. Kawana put his life on the line for you. You failed to silence him, and you let him get away. That means whatever happens next, it's his move. And whatever he does to you, out of my business. As for me, I have no evidence on Kawai's murder, so you're off my list too. I only came here today because I wanted to know why you betrayed Kawana. That's all. I hope Mitsurakun has a speedy recovery. Back already, Yagamishi. How are you feeling after last night? That shockwave from the blast took you down. Oh yeah. That was something else, I gotta say. Ha <laughs> ha! I bet, tough guy. Kamurocho's finest detective never fails to impress. Doc, you made it. We've been asking around if anyone's seen Kuana. You don't want to know how that went. No leads, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Doesn't help that RK is crawling all over the place right now. Soon as they spot Kuana, they're gonna make their move. Kuana gave this to me yesterday. Isn't that Toshiro Ehara? Kuana-san called you out there just to give you this? Yep. He told me to give it to Ehara. What the? Oh man, it looks like it's cracked. Can you take a look at it, Tsukumo? I get the feeling it's no ordinary pendant. Certainly. Not handing it over to Ahara till you know what the deal is? Well, he won't mind, will he? Besides, I damn near got blown up over that thing. Speaking of, Yagamishi, what's the status of Ahara's sexual battery trial? Saori-san's preparing for the appeal. Still no date, but the courts are working as fast as they can. If they accept the case and it goes to trial, they'll find out about Kawana one way or another. That it put Reiko Kusumoto in public security in the shithouse, right? Right. 
If Kawan and his murders come to light, anyone connected to Reiko Kusumoto could be suspected as an accomplice. And if that happens, she'd lose any control she had over the pension fund. Interesting. Everyone wants their own brand of justice to come out on top. But enough is enough. If we don't handle this, public security will take out Kawana. And I can't let him die like that. Then what's your next move? Gonna head to Ahara's trial and back up Sari-san. <sighs> Feels like we've come full circle. I'd argue the opposite, Yagamishi. The circumstances surrounding the trial are completely different this time around. I can't help but consider how grand a task simply seeking the truth could be. Seriously. But exposing the truth is the only way to save some and get justice for others. We can't just stay quiet and watch. <laughs> Sounds like you're seeing the light. Detective work's not so bad, is it? <laughs> Can you guys keep an eye out for Kawana and Ijinsho? I need to go over Ahara's case with Sari-san. 10-4. We'll amp up surveillance. We're going too, Sukiyura. Time to get shit done. <laughs> right on! I'll make sure that pendant you got from Kawana isn't hiding anything. Yagamishi, please be careful out there. RK has its eyes and ears all over Ichincho and Kamurocho.
いらっしゃいませ And stay down. Well, looks like we've got a full house. Shirosaki-sensei asked me to come by. She said they needed some business handle while you were out of town. I find it hard to believe she'd put it that way. <laughs> Maybe not. Either way, I don't mind helping. Yagami-san, you're just in time. I think we should conduct another interview with Ahara-san. Okay, but what will we talk about? If we want to claim he's innocent of battery, then we need to prove he's the one who murdered Mikoshiba at the same time. But since the murder footage isn't admissible in court, we need something more substantial. Basically, we need new evidence. And that might mean something no one's seen or found yet. So your plan is to meet with Ahara and just ask him? I know it's a long shot, but yes. I'd like to come help, but someone has to check Higashi-san's work. Excuse me? If I have to be Hoshino-kun's lackey, I'm fucking out. I'd prefer if you address me as Hoshino-sensei. Mouth on this kid! Ehara only seems to open up to you, Yagami-kun. So, if you talk to him again, do you think we'll find out something new this time? I'll see what I can get out of him. Having another chat with him couldn't hurt. Sounds good. Oh, and look after Salary for me, would you? Sure, but Mafuyu, should you even be here? Won't the prosecution think you're double-crossing them? What do you mean? I am just here to get dirt on the defense. Expect Prosecutor Takano to hear all about it. <laughs> Guess we better watch ourselves. I still have some preparations to make. Yagami-san, why don't you go kill some time? I'll call you as soon as I'm ready. It shouldn't take long. Sure thing. I'm going to try and get in touch with Ahara's wife. Even though they're separated, Ahara may have shared details about Mikoshiba's murder with her. Oh, and Higashi-san will be there to help. Ahara's status as either a sex offender or a murderer is the court's focus right now. Opinion split between who thinks the Mikoshiba murder footage is authentic and who doesn't. I'll call you once I'm ready. This may be our last meeting with Ahara-san before the appeal. Make it count, Yagami-san. RK's still raising hell around the city. Bunch of ex-Tojo guys have been especially loud and proud. 
Just watch your back out there. Not that I don't think you can handle it. Don't forget how much pressure's on Sauri right now. Ehara's trial has the police and prosecution on edge, so I'm sure it's a lot for Sauri to handle by herself. But I'll do whatever I can on my end. for keeping you, Yagami-san. We should head to the detention center. Where are you? In Kamracho. How about I take a cab and pick you up? If you please. I'll be waiting. Isn't that just the worst? So the murder footage can't be used as evidence. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be played in court for all to see. Yeah, and if it was, it would prove your innocence and overturn your battery conviction no problem. But the prosecution flat out refuses to accept you murdered Mikoshiba. There's no room for error. You could flat out confess and they would refuse to accept it. Excellent. In the end, they'll lock me up for battery. And I'll get away with murder. Yeah, yeah. We know all about what you and Kwana planned. We just don't have the evidence to prove it. <laughs> My condolences. Which reminds me, you said you'd confess to killing Mikoshiba after you got out of prison, right? Then, as icing on the cake, you'd admit the battery charge was false and humiliate the law for letting a murderer walk free. Exactly. The public must know that the law can't be trusted. Personally, I hope the media hops all over it. I bet you do. So when that time comes, you'll need some decisive evidence of the murder so your confession holds water. Maybe you've got something like that in your back pocket already? <laughs> Because we'd sure look good if we had some new evidence to take into the appeal. That's why you geniuses came all the way out here. I told you I wouldn't admit to the murder in court. I have no intention of just handing it over. Handing it over? So you're saying there is still a piece of evidence we don't know about? <laughs> what is it, Ahara-san? Even if there was, you'll never get your hands on it. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. The 
murder weapon. Kanagawa PD said the weapon used to kill Mikoshiba still hadn't been found. Yet it appears in the footage without a doubt as to what it is. A knife. If it wasn't found at the murder scene, it's highly likely the suspect or an accomplice took it with them. Any normal criminal would have just ditched it somewhere. Except you're anything but normal. You got revenge for your son, and you want to publicly humiliate the law for letting you pull it off. Your point? If you were cleared of the battery charges and confessed to Mikoshiba's murder without evidence, no one would buy it. You'd need something convincing. Busting out the weapon no one's found yet would do the trick. That one piece of evidence would flip the whole case on its head. Well, <laughs> look at you go. Then tell me, where do you surmise I've hidden this weapon? Well, right after killing Mikoshiba and Ijinsho, you would have had to book it to Ikebukuro Station. But you had accomplices with you. And if that's the case, there would have been plenty of time to hide the weapon. Yeah, so... That's about as far as I've thought this out. If that's it, then I'm done here. Kawana's vanished, Ahara-san. Public security found out about him. Public security? Kawana wanted me to tell you he won't make it to the end of your revenge plan. So, I'm the last man standing, am I? Well, he's already helped me plenty. I never expected to see him again anyway. At this point, he won't be able to outrun them. If public security catches him, he'll get much worse than an unfair trial. Burying him will be the least they do. What do you mean? What's going on? You remember last time? If you don't recall, I said you'd grab the tiger by the tail. And your tiger is... public security? Right. And they're out there on the warpath. Everything has to be brought into the light. We need what you did to be exposed. Kawana can't be saved in any other way. I need your help, Aharsan. Then you lose. I'll never admit to killing Hiro Mikoshiba in court. The system can die. It threw Toshiro away. And I won't lift a finger to save it. Kawana-san knew how this could end. We have our convictions. When this started, we knew it could end up costing our lives. You knew going in, huh? And that's all? Is that what you tell yourself so you can sleep at night? Maybe it is. Yagami-san. Do you remember my original request? To look into both the Hara incidents? I asked you to look into the train event, and then I asked you to look into Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. And now, I'm afraid I have to make one more request of you. Do you still carry your defense attorney's lapel pin? Ehara-san's trial. I'd like you to take the floor with me to defend him. It's going to be eventful. I think we should go as a team. Sure about that? You know, my legal counsel isn't cheap. I'll let Genda Sensei know about the invoice. You got it. Count me in. You never know when something like this will happen. Check it out. I always have it on me. I know that. Huh? <laughs> you do?
Cock, where are you at right now? Just got back to Yokohama, actually. You weren't spying on me, were you? <laughs> you just noticed? Everywhere you went, I know about it. And I mean everywhere. <sighs> where are you right now? Over at the Leomon's place. Hoshinokun and Higashi are here, too. Oh, right. They mentioned they were going to Yokohama to see Ahara's wife or something. Make your way over, will you? I need a full report, and I don't want to hear you were slacking. Well, look at you taking charge. Anything else, boss? Yeah, don't drag your feet along the way. Looks like the gang's all here. Everyone but the star of the show. Now that is next level ass kissing, Hoshino-kun. <laughs> a good ass kisser is a good communicator. Welcome back, Yagami-san. <laughs> Grab a seat, Tuck. Nice. So you're really gonna stand in court again? Just to give Sari-san some support. Ah, I see. Does that mean I don't need to be present for Ahara-san's appeal? Huh? How would I know? Isn't that more of a Sari-san question? If Yagami's there, I don't see why you gotta be. <laughs> you're on thin ice, Hoshino-kun. You still gonna have a job if you're redundant. I have been plenty useful. At least, a little. Should a lawyer really have to say that? This guy is kind of a rookie, huh? Gah! Man, the gangster just put the lawyer on notice. <laughs> well, that's all I got. How about you guys? So where's Kiwana? Any word on where he's hiding? Yeah, about that. We must have asked everyone in Eugene's show, but we got nothing. RK's out there looking for him, too. They seem to think I've still got him under watch. On the flip side, that means they still haven't found him either. Well, yes, although that's not much consolation. You think Kiwana-san's still in one piece after the explosion? Alive, yes. Unharmed, I can't say. When I saw him, he was already making plans to disappear. The real problem is what happens next. Now that he knows Reiko Kusumoto betrayed him, we don't know Kawana's next move. I'd never let that slide if I were in his shoes. 
Maybe Kuwana's thinking the same thing, you know? He spent all that time underground brooding and shit. Maybe he's really gonna stick it to Reiko Kusumoto. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Oshinoku, Higashi. You two met with Ahara's wife? Yeah, but we didn't gain much from it. Turns out Ahara and his old lady don't really keep in touch. After her son took his life four years back, she refused to keep living under the same roof. Only reason she hasn't divorced him is because it's too much of a pain to process. She's been living in that same apartment even when Toshiro-kun was still alive. She let us light some incense on his altar, but she was pretty vacant the whole time. Did Ahara's battery charge come up at all? She said she didn't care. She didn't care her husband was out there groping women and killing bullies? Has she even seen Mikushiba's murder footage? According to her, no. Really? That's hard to believe. Well, there's no easy way to put it, but it felt like she'd given up on everything. Made for a pretty depressing trip, I'll tell you that. What's the word on RK coming down to Eugene Chill? Everywhere you look, they're strutting around like they own the place. And they know our faces, too. They stare us down, but never get too close. It's fucking annoying. Plus, they're acting like they're here to stay. They've been harassing the joints we have ties with. Harassing how? You know, shit like pretending to be normal customers, and dying and dashing or complaining to mess with business. Then another guy will come in and be like, need protection? and suddenly they're charging a fee. That's some Yakuza shit right there. Old shit, too. A Yakuza who pulls out today is out in one shot under the anti-gang laws. And Soma? Is he still around town? Nah, there's nothing on him. Even if he is, he probably went underground by now. And Soma isn't exactly a social butterfly like Akatsu. Finding him's gonna be a pain in the ass. Especially if he has public security's help. Unless it's a life or death situation, I doubt he'll show his face. That about wrap it up? Seems so. As for me, I think I'll head out and see what I can find out about Kawana-san. Same. I just hope he's okay. Tsukumo-san and Sugiura-san do some impressive work. Yeah. You don't hold a candle to them, Hoshino-kun. Black belt in karate, and you never even use it. Well, I'm just more of a behind-the-scenes kind of guy. Anyway, I'm heading back to Kamurocho. Enjoy yourself, Higashi-san. What about you, Doc? Wanna call it a night? Tesso said he'll let us stay if you do. No skin off my back, really. So, what'll it be? If I can really stay the night, I'll take him up on that. Yagami, I think I'll stick with Anaki and tag along. <laughs> Guess that means I'm helping you guys out. Couldn't live with myself if I backed out now with a fish this big on the line. Get this, talk. Tesso asked me to fly the drone. <laughs> Says it's the first time he's seen this place from above. Seriously, it's pretty legit. I picked one up for myself.
Really, guys? Hey, Yagami-san. You handle everything in the Jincho? Uh, I think so. Really? Good, because Tsukumo-kun said he had something he wanted to show you. He's upstairs. You mind going to him? Tsukumo-kun, Yagami-san's here. Something up? Yes. It's about the pendant Kawana-san gave you. Turns out, it was just a decoy after all. Decoy? For what? For what was inside. This. The cracks in the pendant were hiding an SD card. And on it was some video data. Video data? Of what exactly? It's the footage of Ihara murdering Hiro Mikoshiba. Just like we saw before. No additional scenes. That doesn't make sense. Why would Kawana put his life on the line just to give me that? I mean, RK came after him and everything. And all for a video that's already all over the internet? Yes. Except the video on that card is the original. All the others were copies of this source. In layman's terms, this is the master tape, or in film, it'd be the negative, with no additions or modifications of any kind. What do you mean? And how do you know for sure? So this SD card here is a special little thing. You can't usually buy it in stores. It's called a worm, or write once, read many. If you were to take a picture with a digital camera, the images saved on this SD card couldn't be edited or deleted. It's what forensics teams use when photographing crime scenes. Which means what we have here is unaltered footage of Mikoshiba's murder. That means it would qualify as evidence in Ahara's appeal. Yeah, I'd say you have room to negotiate with the prosecution and the judge. At the very least, it beats an internet copy with no origin. Hey, think this will be enough to win the trial? <laughs> well, I can't guarantee that. But it does explain why Kawana-san took such a risk. The video on here is the sole original. That's why he'd only leave it in the hands of someone he trusted. Kawana asked me to give this to Ahara. Sure, but he had to know we'd turn it inside out first. Maybe it's Kawana-san's way of entrusting you with the evidence you need? After all, with public security after him, he may not live to see tomorrow. And seeing how he's on the run, he had to find a way to get that into Ihara-san's hands. Which I think is why he left it all up to you, Yagamishi. And it's settled. It's about time I expose everyone involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Ihara, Kawana, and his students. That's the first step to luring public security out in the open. And I believe the SD card will make that possible. So hey, looks like almost getting blown up was worth it. Uh, I guess so. Hey, I'm sorry to bug you. Matsu? What are you doing here? I was talking to the MRC guys earlier. They said you'd be at this detective agency. Everything okay? Well, Akane started hanging out with some shady guys. So I figured I should talk to Yagami-san about this. Sounds like a tricky situation. Please, have a seat. Akane's that girl you hung out with all the time, right?
So, want to tell me more about these shady guys? They're these thugs from Tokyo. RK, they're called. They've been flirting with her. Okay. What else? They got her so comfortable, she blurted out some stuff she probably shouldn't have. Stuff about you, Yagami-san. Well, that's nothing I can't handle. But rolling with RK is bad news. She needs to stop. Their leaders are ex-Yakuza, you know. I knew it. So they actually are dangerous, then. What's really going on? They asked Akane which student you cared about the most. What? So she... kinda blurted out Koda's name. She did what? Yeah, even Akane knew she messed up. So she called me right after. Yagami-san, you've been mixed up with RK, right? You think they might go after Koda? Can you try to get in touch with her? Actually, I haven't been able to. What about Akane? Oh, right. Uh, let me try and call. Hello, Matsun? Akane, where are you right now? The last place Mikoshiba Sensei was. Huh? I'm with RK. We're at the building where Mikoshiba Sensei's body was found. Why? Masun, are you with Yagami already? What? How do you know about that? It's Yagami. Is Koda-san there too? She is. Yagami-san! It's me! Koda! Please! Help me! This Yagami? <laughs> Come on over and we'll play. You know the place, right? Who is this? Not important. Better hurry, or else Koda-chan will have to entertain us. Know what I mean? Don't! What the hell do you want? Come down and find out. Oh, I'm sure this goes without saying, but if you go to the cops, these girls are as good as dead. Do you guys even understand what you're doing right now? <laughs> Better hurry. What? What's happening? Matsun, you stay here. Tsukumo! I'll contact Kaito-san and Higashi-san for help. And I'll fly my drone out to the scene, too. Perfect. Counting on you. Let's go, Yagami-san. Hurry up, or I'm leaving without you. What's up? Yagamishi, this is Tsukumo. My drones just arrived at the scene. Koda-san and Akane-san are with some men. About 20 of them. Where's Kaito-san and Higashi? I've contacted them. They're on their way now. Good. Where those RK guys are holed up? He's Soma with them? Nobody's had eyes on him yet. Just a sec. Tsukumo? I've confirmed the enemy position, Yagamishi. They have our two young hostages surrounded. So a head-on assault would be too dangerous. 
naturally. I've already come up with some countermeasures we can run. Would you care to hear my plan? <laughs> you always come through, man. Okay then. Walk us through it. Wow. Look who decided to show up. Too scared to come without all your little bodyguard buddies? Not like you've got room to talk. How many shitheads does it take to watch these girls? I never thought it would end up like this. You believe me, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to save the lecture for after all this is over. You'll be free soon. That goes for you too, Kodasan. <laughs> <laughs> you so sure about that? You kidnapped them to get to me? Well, here I am, so let's go. <laughs> we did lure you here. So we can beat your sorry ass to death. Okay, then. <laughs> so what was your plan? Throw all these guys at us as soon as we kick down the door? <laughs> We're smarter than that, you know. Yeah. We knew you'd have some backup! Here comes! Let's take out the trash! Yagami! Hands where I can see them! And same for you two! Hey, calm down. I've got one more thing. I'm not a big fan of guns. Huh? Shit! Look there! Face the wrath of the Yokohama 99! The wicked shall be smited and retribution shall be swift! <laughs> ah! Come on. Did you really think one gun was enough to take out a crew like us? If you did, you were wrong. You two sit tight a little longer. But just to warn you, I'm gonna go hard on these guys. You wanna see some asses kicked? Don't blink, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. I want them down before the smoke clears. Yeah. Come on! Here we 
go! We are ready to go! I'm... so sorry. No. I'm the one who got you into this. It's not your fault, it's RK's. But I'm next in line after them. <laughs> Besides, I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Coda... I'm really sorry. It's alright. Well... I'm gonna head home. Soma? Uh, what? Who? Connie, get back! Huh? Here all by yourself? What are you trying to pull? Oh, I'm just here to talk. To be honest, Kwanos put us in kind of a tight spot. How so? Well, he's got Kawai's body, Reiko Kusumoto's victim. <laughs> Hidden in a freezer, of all places. Been on ice for what? Five years? You know about this, Yagami? Yeah. Problem is, he's planning to reveal its location on the internet. If that happens, Kusumoto-san will be ruined. No doubt, her fingerprints and other traces are all over the damn corpse. Yeah, but that's for the better. I mean, she won't have to listen to you. Reiko Kusumoto is a capable woman who can swim with the tides. She's irreplaceable. It would be unfortunate to lose her over some low life she had to put down. She's on our side now, and she's accepted it. So it's your duty to protect people like that? I protect order, not people. 
Consider me a necessary evil. Necessary evil? That's right. If I hadn't gone undercover, the Tojo clan's ex-Yakuza would be spread all over by now. If that happened, we never would have been able to track their current activity. That's why I created the RK Network. To keep Kamurocho's underground under control. Much safer and less messy than wiping them out indiscriminately. But in the shadow of order, there's always a pair of dirty hands. Right. Kiwana said something like that too. <laughs> but if there's one difference between the two of us, it's that I find my work enjoyable. It gives me purpose. When I dirty my hands, it's in the service of order. It goes back to a necessary evil to maintain peace in this country. In my eyes, peace does require violence. It only works when killers are below the surface, keeping it afloat. Sawa-sensei too? Is that the peace you want? <laughs> Yoko Sawa? She did have to die. She almost connected the Mikoshiba case to Kuwana. She was getting very close to it. She may even have figured out Reiko Kusamoto was involved. The fewer people who know a secret, the better kept the secret stays. I don't remember even hesitating on that call. And I think that means... Well, you guys won't like hearing this. But it was justified. You asshole! Oh, whoa, whoa. Don't fly off the handle now. I haven't finished what I had to say. What the fuck? Did I mention how much of a pain in the ass Kuwana made this? He negotiated for your lives, using Kawhi's body as leverage over us. What? So relax, would you? I don't plan on killing you here. Then why even show your sorry face? The trial for Ehara-san is coming up, right? You know, the groping thing. I've come here with a request that I hope you'll consider. This from you? Reiko Kusumoto's name is not to come up during the Ehara trial. That shouldn't be so hard, right? Shurosaki-sensei would have to agree to this, too. And if we were to refuse? Nothing. It's Kusumoto-san's request. She is asking nice. What? A mother doesn't want her child branded a murderer's son. Could you give her that much? <laughs> and that's all. I'm sure we'll talk soon. You think so, huh? Why put off what we can settle now? Soma! <laughs> Akane! Akane-chan! <laughs> Why am I... Pink gun. You okay? <laughs> that son of a. Well, hell, that's gotta hurt. But a bruise sure beats the alternative, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd say he got us good with that one. Yeah. But that was a terrible call. If Soma hadn't been packing a paint gun, that would have been really bad. You two are more important than him. I should have prioritized protecting you. Yagami-san. You've been brave. I'm sure this was really scary for you. We'll need to do things one step at a time, Kaito-san. We can't tackle it all at once. First thing... Ahara's groping appeal needs to become a murder trial that outs Kawana and his students. That way, if public security is our real enemy here, we'll have the prosecution and the courts on our side. That'll be on me. I'll reveal a truth no one can deny. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty much your specialty. Send that asshole to jail for good. <laughs> You've got this, Yagami-san. Whoa, this is crazy. Why is he so hot? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute ago, she got shot. And now look at her. <laughs> Teenage.
teenagers. Hello? Yeah, I'm getting ready now, sorry son. Oversleep? <laughs> ah, I would never... Okay. Yeah. All right, see you at the courthouse. Held on violation of Shinjuku Station's anti-nuisance ordinance, the defendant of this appeal is active duty officer Akihiro Ehara. He was previously convicted and sentenced to six months. However, the defense wholly rejects the sexual battery charge and asserts his innocence. The prosecution points to two pieces of evidence to prove the defendant guilty. One is the security camera footage from Ikebukuro to Shinjuku Station. The other is fiber traces from the victim's undergarments on the defendant's hand. The defense maintains this was not sufficient evidence to issue a guilty verdict. We have prepared counter arguments to each piece of the prosecution's evidence. How does the prosecution respond? We maintain the original sentence was perfectly adequate. That is all. Then first, let's examine the security footage from Ikebukuro and Shinjuku Station submitted at the first trial. This is footage of Ikebukuro Station on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. The individual wearing sunglasses and a mask is believed to be the defendant. This person remains in the area for over an hour, watching as countless trains make their stops. At 9.06 a.m., he locates the victim of this case that he boards the train and pursues her. This footage of the station platform is from when the suspect and victim board the train car. We already saw this during the first trial. Let's not be redundant. Of course not. The victim claimed the defendant moved in a suspicious manner once the train left Ikebukuro Station, ultimately placing his hand under her skirt. After they arrived at Shinjuku Station six minutes later, the victim gathered her courage and grabbed his hand. However, there's a possibility the offender seen here is not the defendant himself, but a different person entirely, a stand-in. The goal was to disguise this event as an alibi for the murder which occurred in Yokohama that same morning. In other words, this instance of sexual battery was a conspiratorial fabrication the original verdict was issued without taking this into consideration, resulting in an inadequate trial. This is merely speculation. The defense has no proof to support these claims. <laughs> Precisely the issue. Yes, there is indeed no definitive proof that confirms the existence of a stand-in. However, the notion itself cannot be disproved even with all of the prosecution's evidence. Would you care to elaborate, please? The assailant fled the train and was caught shortly after on the Shinjuku station platform. Many nearby passengers filmed the scene, which then circulated throughout Japan. The impact may have been greater since the defendant was an active duty officer. There's no mistake that the man apprehended at the platform was the defendant. Upon arrival, station police arrested him and immediately performed a trace element inspection. With that said, there's a very real possibility the offender who ran off the train 
was an entirely different person, and we have the evidence to prove that. If you'll kindly look at this. What is this? Display it on the large monitor, please. Is that a diagram of Shinjuku Station? That's correct, Your Honor. First, the victim and the offender ran onto the platform as soon as the train doors opened. The train car they boarded is here on this map. We've marked the offender's route with an arrow. The lighter areas on the overhead view are within the security camera's line of sight. More people pass through Shinjuku than anywhere on Earth in a single day. It's packed with security cameras. However, this arrow with the dotted line reveals the existence of a small blind spot. That's where the defendant and stand-in swapped places. I see. So you claim this was their opportunity? Yes. As such, I'd like to question the defendant once more over this evidence. Defendant, when you were issued the verdict in your first trial, you said the following to the judge. In a warehouse about three days ago, a body turned up in Yokohama. If that wasn't enough, you correctly identified the body as Hiro Mikoshiba, despite the fact the police had yet to do so. How did you manage to pull off such a feat? It came to me in a dream. Strange. Miko Shiba-san was your son Toshiro-kun's classmate, was he not? That's right. Toshiro Ehara was found dead in his apartment four years ago. He took his own life. Afterward, the defendant sued the school over Toshiro-kun's suicide. Yes? Ehara-san, can you tell us why you sued the school? There were rumors my son had been bullied. Unfortunately, the court wasn't able to substantiate that claim. And these rumors were discovered on the internet? They were. Of the bullies mentioned, Miko Shiba-san's name was among them. Were you aware of this? I was. Would you say you harbored murderous intent against Miko Shiba-san? Objection! The defense's question is irrelevant. This case is to examine whether or not sexual battery took place. Also, the Kanagawa police are actively investigating Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. The courtroom is no place for baseless speculation. How does the defense respond? The timing of the battery incident makes this case an alibi for Mikoshiba-san's murder. We believe there's a very relevant connection. Very well. The prosecution's objection is overruled. And please keep it brief. Just as soon as the defendant answers the question. Did you harbor murderous intent for Hiromi Kashiba? Of course I did. In other words, Your Honor, it goes like this. On the day Toshiro-kun's bully, Miko san was killed, the defendant set out to synchronize the murder with sexual battery. It became his alibi for the murder, and the prosecution and the court all but approved it. <laughs> A six-month sentence sexual battery, and getting away with murder. That's all the motivation the defendant needed to fabricate this elaborate scheme. His stand-in groped his accomplice, and then they swapped places before getting caught. It's all entirely possible. Then the defense should present some evidence to prove it! Wrong. That's not how this works, is it? The prosecution bears the burden of proof in criminal cases. If we go through all the evidence and discover the possibility no groping took place, then it's on the prosecution to refute that. Fine. Have it your way. The defense's argument about the security camera's blind spot is flimsy at best. While the defendant was running, his female victim was chasing after him. Surely the victim would have seen if he had switched places with a stand-in. Yet the victim provided no such testimony. 
The victim, Yui Mamiya, was an accomplice in the scheme. Objection! This is an insult to the victim. Such claims harm the integrity of all women! We have good reason to doubt the victim's credibility. She was all part of his plan. In fact, that's all but sure. A 50-something man separated from his wife was driven by loneliness to harassment. That seems much more likely. The way you phrase that, is the prosecution admitting the defense's claims aren't wholly impossible? Beg pardon? That would imply the guilty verdict from the first trial was issued without 100% certainty. Now you're just nitpicking! Defense, if you claim to doubt the victim, then what is your reasoning? Yes, we do. In actuality, she wasn't the only conspirator who helped stage the groping. The bystander who captured the defendant, the witness who recorded the incident on his smartphone. Both men, in conjunction with the victim, were classmates from the same high school. Which means, strange as it sounds, that these seemingly unrelated individuals were in fact all acquaintances. It's clear that this was a carefully organized and planned event. Our investigation discovered they all graduated from Kurokawa Academy in Tokyo 13 years ago. Additionally, Yoko Sawa, the teacher who was killed in Ijincho, graduated from the same class. Four years ago, she was the teacher of the defendant's son, Toshiroku. We believe this indicates a connection between the Kurokawa Academy graduates and this case. Of course, that's as deep as we need to go on that. We've simply presented the possibility that multiple conspirators were present when the defendant was apprehended. And as long as such a possibility exists, the defense asserts the defendant cannot be found guilty. Your Honor, may I speak? <sighs> what is it? I haven't committed murder. Per my conviction, I am just a pervert who victimized a woman on the train. Everything else is in the defense's imagination. Defendant. Why did you agree to this appeal, then? You can ask my lawyers that. I simply didn't stop them. How does the defense respond? It's just as the defendant says. However, we believe his recollection may be a bit fuzzy. To refresh his memory, I'd like him to take a look at some footage. Will you permit this, Your Honor? Now what? But please, don't display this on the large monitor. We shouldn't shock the public. It's footage of a murder. Excuse me, wasn't that denied as evidence? As I said, this is solely to refresh your memory. It's up to the judge whether or not we show it. Please proceed. That's just internet footage with no known origins. No. This footage is from the SD card in the camera used to record it. This is a Write Once Read Many card, also known as a worm. The police use it to photograph evidence. Anything recorded on it is highly reliable data. After serving your time, you intended to release this to the public. But Kawana can't wait for that to happen. And that's why he left it in my care. <laughs> Don't kill me! Please! I'm sorry! I'll make it up to him. I'll atone for it. I swear I'll try to make it up to him somehow. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it. Stop 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 it.
Defendant, in that footage, is the person in the white raincoat you? You could say it looks like me. The person you killed is Hiro Mikoshiba. According to the autopsy report, he died sometime after 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. Therefore, it can only be that the person who passed through the ticket gate shortly after at 7.43 a.m. was not you, but your stand-in. As the defense, we cannot allow our client's conviction of sexual battery to stand in light of this footage. May we continue questioning the defendant? How does the prosecution respond? Even if the footage has an irrefutable source, that alone does not prove guilt of murder. I'd just like to state that in advance. So the prosecution is denying the murder? <laughs> Remind me who exactly is defending me here. Good question. The defense repeatedly mentions a stand-in, but where is this person currently? Who even are they? The person on the station security footage was wearing sunglasses, but he looked just like the defendant. We believe he used a mask made from a 3D printer. If you look closely, the alleged defendant at Ikebukuro Station and on the train does not move his mouth at all. We learned this from sources who may have been the stand-in and the collaborators. Then we should call them to the stand to testify. No need. The defendant should know all of this already. I don't know anything about it. He said he doesn't know. So what now? The defendant admitted to sexual battery, not murder. The murder footage has excellent production value, but nothing else corroborates the defense's claims. Your Honor, I would like to request further witness testimony from the victim. Denied. Both the defendant and the victim certified the validity of the battery, leaving no room for discrepancies. It would be unprecedented for a victim to testify further in this situation. By that logic, there's no precedent for using battery as an alibi for murder either. I will admit there is a possibility, but not enough to justify subjecting the victim to further distress in court. I must once again deny the request. But... Defense? I've made myself clear. Your Honor, following the defendant's last statement, we have a few more questions. Understood. Please proceed. What's next? Harasan, you're familiar with Jin Kuwana, aren't you? He's a handyman in Ijinsha. Nope. Never heard of him. On October 7th, Kuwana disguised himself as you and boarded a train in Ikebukuro bound for Shinjuku Station. He was the stand-in for the sexual battery mentioned earlier. Your Honor, no evidence has been submitted to verify that statement. The name Kuwana was not present on any documentation, nor was the prosecution notified. Kawana is the very person who encouraged the defendant to murder Mikoshiba-san. Defense. As the prosecution has stated, no one by the name of Kuwana is known to the court. We've not even confirmed if he exists. Please refrain from this line of questioning. But, Your Honor, Kuwana is a key factor in the defendant's motive. Without him, Ahara-san never would have killed Mikoshiba and we wouldn't be in this courtroom. Am I getting through to you? I... don't know a Kawan. No, you definitely do. Kawan is the one who fanned the flames of vengeance. You'd do well to remember that. Take a listen to this. What is it? It wasn't just some random internet post that made you decide to kill Mikoshiba-san, was it? Even while battling the school in court, you still didn't know for sure who pushed Hoshiro-kun to his death. That's when Kuwana came to you with this recording, right? Hmm? That's... Why do you...
Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. That's the voice of Yoko Sawa, the teacher Toshiro-kun confided in about being bullied four years ago. It was recorded in secret and played for the defendant by Kawana. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this. In front of an entire courtroom. Believe me, I never wanted to do that. But they said there was no hope. That I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. After hearing this, the defendant came to believe Mikushiba-san's unchecked aggression toward Toshiro was the driving force behind his son's tragic suicide. And ultimately, this became his motivation for murdering Mikushiba-san and staging his elaborate cover-up. Isn't that right, Hara-san? Is it coming back to you yet? Afraid not. I see. Then, is that all? Can the defense please get back on track? This recording only came into my hands by means of Kawana. Except, thinking about it now, much like the murder footage, that would qualify as an unreliable source, wouldn't it? What? We live in an age where audio and video footage can be fabricated and easily reproduced. <laughs> what are you getting at? Sawa-sensei, the one speaking in the recording, was murdered only days ago. And the one who recorded it, Kawana, disappeared without a trace. Meaning that as far as this recording is concerned, no one is left who can prove that it's authentic to the court. Or is my understanding incorrect? You would say you're completely unaware of the details about your son in this recording. Kawana had it. Didn't he play it for you? I never heard it. Regardless of the content, it has nothing to do with me. So you say. In that case, let's just assume then that Kawana and I are the only ones in possession of this audio recording. And considering that Kawana has all but vanished without a trace, that would actually make this the only copy, and me the sole owner. No backup exists. What are you getting at? If this has no value in this courtroom, then I'm afraid it's never going to have a value beyond today. And being that you claim it's unrelated to you or this case, then it wouldn't bother you if I were to delete it from my phone right here and now. Why would... That's crazy. I wouldn't! Okay. Then tell me why I shouldn't do it. Because... Mikoshiba was a man who should never have escaped being judged. That's the proof of my son's pain. The proof that everyone ignored. That recording is all I have left of him! I took the school to court because Toshiro deserved justice. But all they could say is that the cause of his suicide couldn't be determined. In the end, not a single person was held responsible. No proof, no justice. My son was hung out to dry. Yes. That's all true. All of you. You're all so incompetent. You see yourselves as these paragons of law and justice. Yet the truth slips right through your fingers. And then... My alibi made you a mockery. I made it so real. You passed me off as just another pervert. You were gullible. Every single one of you. Toshiro threw his life away and justice was blind to his pain. Mikoshiba walked free because of you. You condone murder and call yourselves the law. That's why. That's why I did it. I took Mikoshiba's life with my own hands. This is coming in hot. Remember that pervert cop? Turns out he's actually a murderer. To recap, you killed Hiro Mikoshiba in Ijincho, 
then headed to Shinjuku Station where you and Kawana pulled off a switch. And there you were ultimately arrested as a Grober. Yeah. That's right. Defendant, you bear animosity for the whole system. We can't just take your words at face value. If you're responsible for Mikoshiba-san's murder, can you bring forward any evidence, or just the murder footage? To tell you the truth, I have something that I was holding on to for the impact that it would have. It's very real evidence that the law has failed us. What have you been hiding then? Will it prove you killed Mikoshiba? Yes. Then what is it? If you go to my wife's apartment, you'll find my son's altar there, in it. You'll find the weapon I used for the crime, the knife I murdered him with. It still has Mikoshiba's blood on it. <sighs> Wait a minute, Genda-sensei. I prayed at that altar. Well, I guess you can lead a horse to water. Very well, then. We'll open an investigation. Defense. Will there be anything further? No matter how justified, vengeance is not something we can ever take into our own hands. That said, in the case of Ahara-san, our system failed him. We know the law strives to be just, but it failed to prove Toshiro-kun was bullied. That's not justice. Not when no one is held responsible. The law, as well as those who enforce it, are far from perfect. So to the court, I say let this case be a lesson. The law is failing to save people who need saving. It's clear proceedings should be adjourned. At a later time when Mikoshiba-san's murder weapon is recovered, we can resume the trial. I'm willing to do that via a special exception. Defense, prosecution, is that clear? No objections. The defense rests, Your Honor. Well, Kanagawa PD called from the Ehara residence. They've recovered the knife. I'm ashamed to admit that I was so blind to his scheme. Well then, that makes two of us. <sighs> Seems I underestimated you. And the worst part of all, I was arrogant. Legal authority and organizational connections should never be held above the pursuit of truth. I'm glad you were able to make me see that again. Thank you. <laughs> nah. You've come a long way. Genda-sensei. Prosecutor Takano's been stubborn as hell from the day he passed the bar. Once he's made up his mind, nothing can stand in his way. Not even his own boss. And he only bows once in a blue moon, so I hope you remember this. <laughs> Typical Genda law. I'm never going to like you. <laughs> you two really pulled it off. Great job. Yagami-san. It's Kusumoto, the Vice Minister. Bondo. He's from Public Security? Right. You handled that with such grace, Yagami Sensei. It's no wonder Kawana holds you in such high regard. What brings you here? Yagami Sensei, would you mind if we talked alone? Why, though? Something we can't hear? The more you know, the more you risk. You'd be endangering your own lives. If you're willing to accept that, feel free to stay. We'll clear the room. 
At this point, we'd just be getting in Yagami-san's way. It was nearly a month ago that Kusumoto-san received a letter from Kawana, though we were unable to use it to trace him. What did it say? Soma told you, didn't he? Kawana hid Shinya Kawai's body, seeing as Kusumoto-san's fingerprints and other traces were still on it. If that surfaces, the Ministry of Health will have yet another massive scandal on its hands. As such, we'd like to recover and dispose of the body as quickly as possible. Perhaps we'll need to melt it down. The body was originally preserved to maintain control over Mitsuru's bullies. I never imagined it would be used against me someday. Fine, but why are you telling me this? Because of the letter he sent. Once Eihara-san's trial is over, he wanted to talk to you. Using my phone. Huh? <gasps> Is that Kawana? Kusumoto-san. Is Yagami there? Put me on speaker, please. Go ahead. So... It seems Ehara-san's trial was a big success. He took our failing legal system and turned it on its head. Couldn't have done it without you. I don't know what you're thinking, but public security has to be tracing this call. You have a plan? No, not this time. That's why I'm using my own phone. And that's just the way I want it. Can't run forever, you know. What the hell are you saying? If they catch you, you're a dead man. That's exactly why I'm negotiating to prevent that. Kusumoto-san. Yes. I'll be upfront with you. I never imagined the day would come that you would be the one to betray me. But if I had to guess, Mitsuru-kun must have woke up. If that's the case, then Kawaii's murder, your whole past, you're not the only one it stands to ruin. If all that comes into the light, Mitsuru-kun will be labeled the son of a murderer. Exactly. I can't let that... That's the one thing I need to prevent. I know. That's good. That's exactly what you should be doing. So please, don't stop now on my behalf. Enough is enough. You and your son have been through enough hell. I want to protect Mitsuru-kun too. Almost as much as his mother. Where is Kawai's body? Tell me. I can only assume this call is being traced, so even as we speak, I'm standing somewhere very close to it. You gave us the location. I'm going to dispatch Soma. Kawada! Where are you? I'm an Injincho. If I take even one step out of this city, I'd be powerless. I've got nowhere else left to go. Kawada! After they find Kawai's body and Kawana is taken care of, I'm next on the list. Bondo can act at his own discretion. If he wants me gone, he'll be able to silence anyone who could know too much. Sawa-sensei was just the first victim. You yourself have sealed this fate, you know. Will you tell him? Will you tell Mitsuru-kun about Sawa-sensei? Surely you know it wasn't my fault. Sawa-san's death was a tragedy. I never imagined that would happen. What about Kawana? Can you imagine how his death is gonna play out in a few hours? I can, but I'm not gonna let him go down without a fight. Which means, I'm going to Ijincho. I can talk some sense into Bando. I won't allow him to kill indiscriminately. So please, don't go out there to risk your life.
That's how it works. No promises. Tsukumo, Kawan is still out in Ichincho. Soma and RK are heading there too. We need to get to him fast. Wait, are you sure about that? You should be able to pick up some chatter. Pinpoint the location. I'm on my way. I'll talk to you soon.